Good afternoon and welcome to Closing Bell. The smiles are wide, not just here in the studios, but of course on the street as well, because finally, for what it's worth, the milestone has been achieved. Uh, once again, all-time highs, third time lucky, and I'd say apart from all the other luck, it was, I think, the pink that <laughs> Nigel was sporting. We were discussing this in the morning on the show as well, you right? Know, Sirbi, it's, I it's told that, you. That's spunk. I told you, you all said it's just a number. I said whether it's the number or the color, today is the day. You know, and, and unfortunately, the first uh, 20 minutes, we were down 50 points. I didn't know where to look. But in the next 90 minutes, the word came through and the fresh all-time highs were Pink of health. Absolutely. Hopefully, that's how the market is going to be. <laughs> Reefa, what do you make of things? Right now, we're still about 100 points up. The, the key question is going to be, can we retain most of this gain and, you know, go off with a flurry? Or whether some, whether some profit-taking sets in? Let's see, right now, the, the screens were looking very good, very solid. And uh, the momentum seems to be intact. Well, and it's good to see that uh, the benchmark indices are holding on to those gains. So we're still at the day's high and the Nifty is now above 25,100. It's a near century on the Nifty with the Sensex up to 60 points and IT is doing the heavy lifting. The Nifty IT index is a gain of about two and a quarter percent. Pull up that uh, contribution plate and you would see how much of an help, uh, you know, these large cap IT names are providing. Uh, even though the contribution or the weightage on the Nifty is not so much, with this 2.2 percent up move, uh, it's uh, helping. Uh, a fair bit. You've got Infosys contributing about 26 points, LTI Mine Tree up about 40 points, uh, Wipro up another 10 odd points. Uh, banks, though, are lagging behind. The Nifty Banking Index is down 130 points. All right. Well, uh, you know, the banks, that could be the the main story. So as everyone is saying, we have hit fresh all-time highs and everyone is celebrating. Actually, the mid-cap index advanced decline ratio has now turned in favor of the declining stock. So we should pull the crisscross lines up for you on the screen. And the banks, it's a contract expiry today. That's both the futures as well as uh, the options data will be expiring today. So that's going to be the important index to track. A couple of stocks that I'm looking at, uh, GSPL took a bit of a breather today. It's seen a big run. In this week itself, it's up close to 15%. It was lower. Now it's cut some of those losses. So that one should come up for you on the screen. Havels as well has tried to move back into the green. So keep an eye out on that one. And a couple of other notable movers in trade today. You have Arvind Fashion, that's now down close to around a percent and a half. You can't, uh, you know, complain about the screen, but there are pockets where we are seeing some kind of selling on the markets as well. The sugar stocks, they have actually come back into a flavor. You have Balram Puccini, last couple of sessions, we're seeing good amount of open interest build up. And today as well, that stock is up close to 3% at the high point So, you point know, Manisha was telling us in yeah. Trading R at about 11 o'clock that, uh, yeah, so because of that, uh, I think um, global sugar prices are up 11.5% yeah. in the last one week. So that's pushed up these stocks uh, higher. Yeah, that's what, you know, I was just speaking to an analyst and they said that it's more of a positive sentiment. For the mm. time being, the market is latching onto it. But we'll have mm. to see fundamentally how much of it flows through, particularly for the refined sugar prices, you know, yeah. which is going to be important from year on. But, you know, uh, and uh, yeah. let's not forget that uh, in terms of policy, what's most critical is whether uh, the export uh, sort of limitations are uh, done away with and we'll be getting into the sugar season right now and whether ethanol, uh, that pricing sort of can come through the clarity and uh, more amount of, of course, uh, you know, uh, sugar being diverted for ethanol production, whether some of those policy measures come through. So that could, of course, that expectation and that hope uh, also seems to be uh, leading to a lift in, in prices today. By the way, don't lose sight of some other stocks. I mean, there's uh, this trend, a stock that's uh, just gone up, up and away is up, uh, up about 5-6% even today. Uh, there are other names. Gravita, we spoke to the company in the morning, 5% higher over there. Uh, there is uh, RPSG Ventures, which is on the move. So these are some of the names uh, which are up and about. You'll hear more on NBCC as well. They are uh, looking at a bonus issue. The meeting is on the 31st. That stock's been uh, flying around since morning, and now it's in double digits. So those are the kind of gains coming in. On mid-caps, just a case in point, uh, you know, Nigel, Perhaps this time, uh, you know, this could be slightly expected because we know that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, sort of experts and money managers in the market are talking about uh, now this being the time to buy large caps and mm. maybe prune down the, uh, the exposure to mid and small caps in the portfolio. So usually I know when there's mid cap distribution, we see it as a bit of a red flag and a sign of caution. But I don't know, I mean, would, one would want to believe that maybe there's some so-called healthy rotation towards the large caps? You know, uh, Surbhi, at around 20,000 in December, that was the call, that now we'll see mm. the move to uh, the large caps. At mm. 21,000 as well, that was the call. Now we're at around 25,000, mm. you know, and still that's the call. Valuation agreed. You get a lot of comfort out there. The leading private sector banks are trading at the same valuation, say, three, uh, three or four years ago as well. But still that mid-cap party is continuing mm. you know, because the money flow is too much and the number of stocks to invest in are too little. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. so let's see whether or not, finally or not, now we see from year on the large cap six center stage. But otherwise, it's been a big 
party for the mid cap and the small Even, cap space. Uh, Mihir Vora also made an interesting point. Uh, so we asked him that, you know, we've not seen a headline correction now for so long. He's like, you know, forget the headline. Individual stocks and sectors have all gone through their period of time-wise or price-wise correction. Almost every sector has gone through that. And perhaps that's going to be the nature of, you know, you know, the markets from here on, that at the headline index, we stay where we are. But individual pockets, IT went through a long patch, and it's only in the last three months, for instance, IT stocks have outperformed, you know, defense, railway stocks, all of them have corrected. Uh, so, you know, maybe... It's going to be about sectors and pockets which take a back seat and see a bit of a pullback before buying resumes. But how should you position yourself in the last hour of trade? Mitesh Tucker is now with a few closing strategies. Uh, Mitesh, uh, how do you feel about today's trading session and what would your calls be? So I think it is again, you know, the banking index which is kind of dragging the markets down. But the rest of the market remains positively biased for me. So it's... Uh, Market when I'm avoiding some banking names, and in fact, we even had a sell on uh, Canada Bank early in the day. And right now, Bank of Baroda is on the sell list. Uh, people stop at about 253, look for targets of 238. And Wipro is on the buy list, uh, you know, which I would recommend buying uh, with a stop at about uh, 528 for targets of 550. So, broadly trading with uh, more of long buyers on pharma, uh, IT, and other names while avoiding the banking side. Let's get to the IT stocks then. And the big winner today is LTI Mindtree. This is after Kotak Institutional Equities upgraded LTI Mindtree to an ad with a target price of 6,200. And they expect growth rates for LTI Mindtree to accelerate. So last year was about 4.4%. That was the trough year. Things stabilized this year with a 6.5% growth rate and accelerate to double digit in F526. And the key driver for that will be BFSI and high tech. They contribute a lot to LTI Mindtree's top line. They were challenged. They dragged the company's growth rates lower. And now already in banking, in US big banks, spending is picked up in the quarter gone by. And the second overhang was on the senior level, senior level uh, exits which have plagued the company. But in the last three, four months, those exits have also, you know, cooled off a bit. We haven't heard too much. So that is a positive. But on the other hand, Tata LXA for Kotak Institutional Equities is a complete sell. They always found the stock expensive. And, you know, for the last two days, the stock price of Tata LXC went up by 26%. Now, Kotak says that Tata LXC is an excellent story. It's a great growth story, but the valuations are just too rich. The stock trades at 61 times forward multiple, which means the stock is now pricing in that the company sees a 20% growth for the next 10 years. And that, according to the uh, Kotak Institutional Equities, is on the higher side. Part of their portfolio, the auto business, led by JLR, is doing very well, but that's 50% of their revenues. The balance 50%, which is uh, healthcare, media, communication, is facing some challenges. So that could you know, be a little bit of a headwind. So it's an excellent story, no taking away good growth, but valuations are on the richer side. Uh, we have with us Prakash Divan now to talk about uh, these you know, many IT stocks which are in the news. Prakash, come in on LTI Mantri. It's been a bit of a sleepy stock. It's underperformed, uh, but it's come back with a bang today with this Kotak upgrade. And throw in your comments on Tara LXC. Uh, do you think it's too expensive? It's a complete avoid? Good afternoon, Rima. So I think uh, on LTI Mantri, uh, it, it's, it's more of a catch-up. Uh, and if this happens to become a slightly more broad-based trend, you'll probably see this uh, reset in in a lot of the largest uh, IT players. You know, we, we spoke about Wipro uh, the other day when I was uh, on one of the shows, uh, you know, and, and this whole positivity from the U.S. interest rate cut is going to start kind of, you know, gradually building up uh, till the cut actually happens, uh, and then we'll see. But uh, Tata LXC is not something which... Uh, you know, I mean, at this price, of course, there's lots more risk involved in terms of execution. If anything kind of goes soft, you, you'll probably see a disappointment. Uh, but, you know, from that same stable, if you were to look at a Tata Tech, uh, which is which is also kind of shaping up, uh, and, and it reminds me of what Tata LXC used to be about seven, eight years back in terms of, you know, building up niches into stronger uh, footholds and, and, and growing, uh, you know, the contract sizes and volume of business. So... I think there's there's much more happening in Tata Tech. So if I actually had Tata Lexi, I don't have it in my portfolio. I would have probably switched to Tata Tech and, and probably done some more outperformance uh, potentially in the next couple of years. Tata Lexi probably on dips you could look at, but at this point I do agree it's it's fully priced. But so is LPI as well. You know, it's after today's move you'll probably have to wait 
uh, for, for things to kind of actually start uh, looking up. Uh, this is more in anticipation and a catch up, as I said earlier. But yeah, data tech definitely gives you that value for money kind of a play. Mm. Okay, that's uh, Tata, Alexi. Uh, some of these Tata stocks have absolutely been uh, breathtaking moves in the last couple of days as well. Uh, Prakash, stay on. We want to talk to you about trend. I mean, speaking of stocks that make breathtaking moves, this one probably takes the cake, right? Massive, massive move in the last one year or so. We have Sudarshan joining in. There is a note from Bernstein, not particularly on trend, but I think it's a note that talks about overall prospects and, you know, uh, opportunities for retailers. They do mention trend in that note as well. Sudarshan, the market has taken note of it and the stock's up 5%. So what is Bernstein saying? That's correct. So Bernstein has initiated coverage on seven stocks from retail or say restaurant sector. And of total seven, they have outperformed call on four stocks and underperformed call on two stocks. So outperform is on Avenue Supermart, Trend, Jubilant Food and Devyani International. And underperformed call is on AB Fashion and Westlife. And target price for majorly two stocks, Avenue Supermart is 6,300 and Trend is at rupees 8,100 per share. And the reasons Bernstein has given is it says investors and companies have been waiting for two decades for Indian middle class to emerge and spend. And this wait is a, is a supply at right value problem, not the demand one. Now with organized players, retailers are scaling up, demand beyond top 10% of pyramid and beyond top 40, 40 cities can be unlocked and it sees huge value creation opportunity which is accessible without wait. Now, specifically talking about trend amongst all the stocks, this is one which has moved higher and it is, it is currently up more than 6%. Just in 2024, stock has moved higher by more than 140% and just in this month, it's up almost 25%. And this move can be attributed to the results that company has been. It has been given a strong set of earnings for the last few quarters. For example, just if you talk about Q1 numbers, revenue was up 56%, EBITDA has increased 67%, Margin had come in 100 bips higher and profit had increased by almost 135%. And one segment that, that has been doing good for the company, that is fashion concept, it had registered double-digit double like-for-like growth. And another trigger apart from the numbers and the note is the Nifty inclusion. Company will be included in Nifty effective September 30th. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, what a journey it's been. Uh, thanks very much for getting us the latest from that report. Uh, Prakash, so I guess, you know, every once couple of years, if you find a trend, then I think everybody's wealth creation objectives are going to be met, right? What a fascinating move. The stock used to be just about 1200, 1300, I think, at the start of January of last year, 23. And now we're talking, uh, you know, uh, targets of 8,000 on this one. Uh, so if not trend, but I mean, overall in this, in this universe of retailing, people got excited when, you know, the... Uh, the demerger of uh, ABFRL was announced as well. So uh, whether that and then there is, of course, uh, you know, Arvind Fashions. I don't know if any of the other retailers can replicate what Trent yeah. did. What are your thoughts on this? And is there a, another trend somewhere in the making that you see? So it's quite tough uh, for people to, you know, do these things uh, over and over again. But uh, if you recall, you know, it's going to be time for... Uh, a little bit of a relook at some of the smaller retail players. You, if you recall around the budget when we had a lot of uh, stops for the Bihar uh, area, uh, and by and large there was expectation that consumer demand would take off. We we spoken about uh, uh, you know V Mart. I mean, and and this is like you know uh, this V two retail. Sorry, V two retail. And and look at look at how some of these companies have started kind of uh, reinventing themselves, learning from the biggies. Uh, but, you know, in that list that uh, Sudarshan actually ran us through, if you really look, DMART, I, I just want to focus on DMART and for a specific reason. Three years back, I remember when people were talking about DMART earnings uh, and discounting those of 2030, 2031, 2032, uh, it, it seemed very laughable. But the way DMART has kind of plodded uh, uh, along in terms of, you know, all uh, adversities, has, has withstood competition, price, uh, inflationary issues, all of these and still kind of made itself rock solid. I'm sure they will they will reinvent themselves on certain counts where they are languishing. So it's not that demand is something which you could uh, very easily write off. My sense is there's much more innovation that will happen in terms of their ownership of these real estate pieces as well. They could come up with a REIT, uh, which, which makes it much more efficient. So, you know, I, I particularly feel uh, that's a stock to watch. Of course, you it, it's a choice. You want to buy it today, you want to wait for some cool off in the market. 
but those are things that will happen. On ABFRL, since you mentioned, Subhi, I just want to tell you, there is, there is a big issue in terms of execution that you see. There has always been promise, but somehow it doesn't kind of, you know, see traction. So when, when you actually go and experience some of their uh, stores and all, you know, it's still kind of, they have lovely brands. Everything is sound, but somewhere there is something missing and that's that's why they've not been able to kind of uh, be in that top notch. But uh, you you could definitely look at demand within that retail uh, while, while, you know, the counter, the argument is Zomato is growing bigger than demand in some sense, uh, but demand will definitely have its place under the sun and could probably uh, reinvent itself on some counts. Hmm. You know, Prakash, since we're discussing consumer businesses, uh, let's uh, also bring in Zomato uh, because of uh, the way things are, have been shaping up. Actually, I want to pull up a tweet that Mr. Dipinbadar Goel put. And there's so much happening within the company. We were just discussing them finally snapping up Paytm's ticketing business. And now here's something new. Zomato is now looking to target enterprise customers. Uh, basically, the tweet goes on to say that uh, Zomato will be uh, looking at this Zomato for Enterprise platform where basically, you know, uh, organizations can tie up with Zomato and offer food delivery to their employees via the app itself. So basically, the employee doesn't have to pay up front and then ask for a reimbursement. It just gets done seamless, uh, seamlessly via the app. So uh, Dipinder Goel says that uh, 100 companies have taken on uh, this, uh, this exercise right now and uh, they're hoping that more sign up and experience this. Rakash, uh, very early days, uh, you know, nascent idea, but a very interesting idea. Any thoughts uh, on this and overall valuations and just, just, just the stock? So, so of course, let me uh, tell you what I read, uh, what I interpreted from this uh, ZFE, uh, this thing, I mean, this enterprise thing that they're launching. It's something like a combination of Sodexo and uh, food delivery, uh, which no matter is good at. So it's they're, they're trying to combine that, make it seamless, make it absolutely frictionless in terms of you know having to pay for it and all of that. So it, it definitely will have takers. The beauty about this is they don't need to go to very large uh, organizations to to kind of attract uh, as clients. They could do it with even a mid-sized, small-sized company, which sees uh, a lot of value in this. So there's definitely going to be a market share improvement that they will have over the other counterparty, which is Swiggy in this case. But Swiggy has. Of course, you know, uh, not being able to expand uh, to that an extent where this footprint keeps growing for Zomato. So, valuations uh, at current levels, you probably see for the timing, everything's priced in. Blinkit has been priced in, the new ticket uh, ticketing business has been priced in. Of course, we'll see how the district response is, but my sense is you'll have to give it some time correction. But uh, it is a name that you need to look at for the next four or five years in terms of as the market explodes. Uh, and this is just the beginning of adaptation. You'll probably see much more happening in this town. Mm. You know, Shilpa likened it to an Ola Electric. How you have an Ola Electric app, uh, a feature in your app itself for enterprises. I think ZFE is going to be something similar for Zomato. Within the app itself, housed, um, you know, for enterprises. Okay, all right. Uh, Prakash, you know, before we let you go, I wanted your view on exchanges. Uh, NSC has made some bit of a dash and they have made a request for, uh, you know, to go ahead with regard to the listing, we'll have to hear what regulators have to say, how they'll have to alter various things to go ahead and list. Yeah. But your view on the stock unlisted market, I believe this morning it was at around 5,000, 5,500 rupees, depending on the quantity, and it has to be a minimum quantity of around 200 shares. Uh, your view on NSE as well as from the listed pack, BSE was doing pretty okay, MCX as well was higher in trade. No, absolutely, Nigel. I think uh, the NSC stock uh, is is going to be probably one big uh, 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 this thing, you know, issue, and then a very tectonic kind of a shift in the market. You will probably have an exchange getting itself listed, and it's only traded on the BSC. The BSC will also benefit in terms of the volumes. Of course, that won't move the needle much for them. But at the current valuations, the market is uh, probably you know uh, giving it to you at a discount to what it would fairly get listed at. My sense is the listing would happen at about 35, 40 P multiples easily of FY25 earnings expectation. And if you go by the IFL report, that could mean anywhere around 7,000, 8,000 rupees per share. So there's enough uh, uh, you know, of a headroom there, but of course, because of the visibility or uncertainty around the listing, uh, the holding period, probably have that haircut. But if somebody is looking at it from a longer term, and let's say if the IPO had already happened and, and you didn't want to sell it for three years, it didn't matter whether it got listed or not, right? So uh, the same stock was available on 2600 about a year and a half back. So you have seen that appreciation in the gray market. But I, I would believe I would believe on the unlisted side, 
uh, it is definitely good, but for long-term investors and who can park that kind of money aside for at least three years. It, it's not for the retail. You don't get small lots as well. So it's it's largely an HRI-driven market at this point. Okay, all right. Uh, noted that uh, view, uh, Prakash. In fact, during COVID, I think it was down to 800 rupees uh, or thereabouts. So those that bought it at that point of time, wow, they're dancing away to the bank. You know, good balance sheet, technology-driven, entry barriers, and COVID proof or anything proof, everything came to a standstill, but trading continued. And that's why these exchanges did quite well. Thanks a lot, Prakash, for uh, joining in and giving us your view on a whole host of uh, the stocks. Well, for the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. You come back and we'll get chatting with our market guest. We'll have our alpha manager of the day, Rupin Rajguru of Julius Bear, who's waiting for us on the other side. Welcome back. The Nifty's now fallen below 25,100. A little bit of profit booking has set in. Tech Mahindra has slipped in the green now, but from the day's high, it's off by nearly a percent and a half. NTPC too has seen a bit of a correction. The Nifty Bank continues to sulk and not participate in that little bit of an up move. Rupen Rajguru, Head of Equity Investment and Strategy at Julius Bear, is now joining in on the show. Rupen, thank you very much for joining in. How do you feel about the market and what is it that you're doing? Hi, afternoon, Rima. Uh, so we are at an all-time high uh, levels of market. Uh, everybody is happy. So are we. And, uh, and you know, the Indian market and U.S. market probably has been two markets which have been on a roll. And uh, uh, while everything looks to be pretty good, we are very good from a economic cycle perspective. But clearly, on the valuation cycle perspective, we are at a higher end of valuation. So times like these, we have seen historically in uh, the worst of mistakes people do tend to make in best of times. So in this market, our objective is to ensure that we don't commit mistakes because in the urge to get that extra additional alpha, I think a lot of people do tend land up doing a lot of mistakes in times like these. So our uh, objective is even if we make lesser returns from here, it's good, but uh, we should not be making mistakes. So uh, no. A little bit of defensive uh, portfolio tilt is what uh, we are advising. Okay. Hi, Rupen. Good afternoon. Let's talk about what you like then. And I like your contrast strategies. And this time on the list, I believe, is insurance. That actually, if you look at it in the last three-year time horizon, it's been a re relative underperformer. So your view on insurance and what you're like from there, point number one. Point number two is chemicals. We spoke to the management of Vinati Organics and they are guiding for better times ahead. Even various other companies, I was going through the con call notes and everyone's saying we have put on CAPEX, things are turning around. 
Second half of this year will be better, and FI26 will be even better. Uh, what's your view on both these two sectors? Uh, yeah, hi, afternoon, uh, Nigel. Uh, so, you know, just taking ahead from the earlier point, uh, since we are in a bull market, so essentially the and in at the current market juncture, our view is you know the theme would be uh, consolidation and rotation. Uh, so that is purely from a market perspective. So we would like the market to consolidate at current level of 25 or 1,000 levels for some time. Uh, and But since we are in a bull market, there will be constant rotation. And we have seen it, right? Uh, like a classic example is IT. In last two months, we have seen IT index giving almost 20 odd percent returns. So with that perspective, you know, what we are looking through, uh, uh, which are the sectors which are probably relatively unloved by the market, and if one or two catalysts come into play, it can really give high returns. So insurance uh, and chemicals uh, definitely fits into the bill. Uh, so within insurance, if you see the, while in the last two, three months, the stocks have done well, but as you rightly said, in the last three years, a lot of be it the life insurance company or be it some of the health insurance company, both have been a a big relative underperformers. And there were a lot of issues, regulatory headwinds were there, taxation impact, and all other things. And the entire insurance sectors have uh, been through the cycle. Uh, so as we stand ahead, you know, the macro story of insurance has not gone away, right? Because three years back when the entire life insurance companies were in a bull run, what was the story? The story was of penetration, story was of how much you know, uh, potential is there is in, 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 in India. So that uh, remains uh, definitely. So now, we are, majority of the regulatory headwinds are behind us. A lot of companies have uh, expanded their distribution network. Uh, they have you know, uh, looked into various channels. Uh, so we like life insurance as a space. So within that, we like companies which have a, a very good banker insurance uh, uh, partnership and which has a, a wide range of product suits. So some of the top two companies, they are good uh, fit into that bill. We also like the uh, general uh, uh, the health insurance space because that space also uh, we believe uh, the price hikes uh, have been uh, done and over the next two to three years, we will definitely see uh, the earnings coming through because the overall uh, you know, uh, co combined ratio will be closer to uh, 100 and that will lead to a good growth in the overall ROEs for that. So that's the space on the insurance side. Uh, on the chemical side, uh, again, it's a classic cyclical uh, move. Uh, you know, between 2017 and 22, it had a phenomenal bull run. You know, the chemical index compounded more than 40 percent and outperforming the Nifty. And thereafter, for the last two, two and a half years, a lot of them have done nothing, and a lot of some of them have corrected also from their all-time highs. So, all the uh, in bull market, in cyclical, all the mistakes, you know, you know, capacity expansions and all have happened. And plus, what we are seeing in the cycle. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, D, you know, destocking was happening, which is probably now going to end. Uh, the prices of the end products are stabilizing. The input costs, which had gone up, is also now, you uh, know, coming off. So probably end of the year, we will see the earning cycle coming through. So probably, you know, we are, you know, six months ahead, but that's how you play in the market. And hence, uh, that is another sector which we believe can uh, be a good play in the current market environment where everything looks to be pretty expensive. Mm. What about uh, QSRs? You're taking a contra bet on QSR, but so far, at least in the earnings, it's not that we've seen any green shoots about a recovery in demand. Yeah. So, Rima, you know, uh, it always some of these things do tend to have uh, mini cycles, which, you know, at times we, it's very difficult for us to comprehend why it's happening, right? Uh, and in fact, if I were to extend, you know, some of the plays uh, which are uh, to some extent linked to the rural recovery as well. So while QSR is not strictly rural recovery play, but a play on the consumption side. So be it the QSRs, be it the, uh, you know, some of the footwear companies, or be it the movie exhibition companies, all have been, you know, uh, having a pretty lull patch for last six to eight months. And uh, what we are seeing incrementally now, uh, you know, the demand will come back. And I think the overall, uh, Two things. One is the rural recovery and also the overall wealth effect will be there. So uh, we don't see a challenge. There was uh, always, in you know, over longer period of cycle, if you take historically, QSRs also in a high inflationary environment do tend to, uh, you know, they are SSG, uh, do tend to get uh, impacted. And now with inflation also getting under control, we, we believe the, uh, again, market looks into the relative rate of change, right? So with, with a lot of them had a four or five bad quarters. So now the 
base is a good base and incrementally on a relative uh, rate of change a lot of these things will uh, look uh, to be you know pretty decent and hence uh, market will also uh, take notice of that and accordingly do that so we believe that a uh, rate of change is what one should look into and in all these segments the rate of change from here on will be pretty good okay uh, uh Ruben, great to have you on uh, so you know another pocket of the market where uh, Obviously, the, there is some valuation comfort, but the issue is how much patience do you need to have is obviously the entire financials landscape. And even here, some of the, for instance, capital market related plays, they've started doing a lot better. Insurance stocks have got a, a nice leg up in the last few weeks. But uh, uh, the big banks, they still remain very range bound. What is your approach to financials? Uh, what are you picking here? What are you avoiding? Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, afternoon, Subhi. Uh, so there are two ways to look at it. You know, one is uh, financials as a pack historically was a significant overweight in all the FPI portfolio. Almost um, uh, they were like 200 to 400 basis point higher weightage they were having. So when there was this FPI selling which is coming, which came through, so a lot of the technical selling happened in large, and their exposure was predominantly large private sector banks, and they got impacted. And a lot of the uh, managers, what did they do? They didn't want to increase their exposure towards financials uh, because it was the highest weightage. So they did some bit of reshuffling and hence the maintaining the BFSI weight, a lot of the weights from private sector went into insurance, some capital market plays, some of the other plays, and hence you know the, the other segment uh, did well. And coming now to uh, uh, financials, and there I would break it up into two parts, which is the large private sector bank and the public sector enterprise, public sector banks. Uh, so, uh, probably from a fund management industry perspective, it is consensus uh, a trade and which has not worked so far, uh, there, which is large private sector bank. Uh, we are also from the camp wherein we believe that in current market juncture, uh, no, the relative margin of safety in large private sector bank is pretty high because they all are, I would say, call them uh, derated growth. So while growth is coming through, but the stocks have not done, done well, meaning they have got derated. So from four times book to three times book to two times book. So now we believe, we believe that we are finding kind of a, a bottom to the valuation of these plays. And in the credit cycle, uh, uh, while the credit growth is a little bit lower, but if the overall credit cycle more from the uh, uh, no, non-performing assets perspective comes through, these guys are relatively better placed than public sector enterprise and hence that valuation uh, uh, differential which had kind of converged again will start diverging when the real, you know, when the credit cost goes higher, we will clearly see the, uh, the private sector bank coming back to reckoning and we believe this is the year in which we will start uh, looking into that. So we are positive on the large private sector banks and the financials. Okay, all right. Uh, Rupen, appreciate you joining in. Give us a view on the markets. Wishing you a good rest of the day. By the way, before we slip into a short break, uh, keep an eye out on the Nifty Bank. Let's move to the low point of the day. We're 25 points away from the day's low on the Nifty Bank. That could do a bit of a jig because the, it's the expiry that plays out. So keep an eye out out there. It went very close to around 51,500 and it bounced off that mark. Slip into a short break, come back. We'll find out what Nimish is picking up in D Street Charter. We'll also get you some top technical trading picks.
Well, keep an eye on some of these renewable energy themes. You know, you have Inox Wind that's moved to the high point of the day. So I think we should get Inox Wind up for you in the screen. Suzlon as well. Well, that as well has uh, moved up. So good uptick is what we're seeing on that one. Vare Renewables as well. That one, remember, it's half from the top. You know, and now in the last couple of days, it started moving up a little bit. So Vare Renewables is another one that's uh, moved higher. So a few stocks moving. But otherwise, the headline index actually has corrected a little bit. But... Uh, Let's focus on the push to transition to uh, uh, clean energy vehicles. They have received a bit of a boost. Now, sources say that two-wheeler makers have confirmed to Union Minister Nitin Gadkari that uh, can begin mass production of flex fuel vehicles. These would be two-wheelers which can run on petrol and higher blends of ethanol. But at the same time, the industry has sought policy enablers to allow large-scale adoption of such Flex fuel two wheelers. Parikshit, he's picking all those exclusive details. He's joining in to fill us in with that. Parikshit, take it away. CNBC TV 18 has exclusively learned from sources that top automobile manufacturers like Bajaj Auto, TVS Motor Company, Hero Motor Corp, and Honda Motorcycles and Scooter India, they have confirmed to Union Minister for Road Transport Nitin Gadkari that they are ready to make flex fuel vehicles in the country. Now, why is it important? Because the Indian government has been pushing uh, ethanol as a fuel for automobiles to reduce India's uh, import bill of crude oil and at the same time reduce pollution as well because ethanol is environmentally friendly. Now, what these automobile manufacturers have uh, offered that they will make two wheelers which can run on higher blends of uh, ethanol, anything in the range of 85% ethanol or 100% ethanol as well. This is ethanol blended with petrol. So all these two-wheeler manufacturers have said that uh, they are ready to produce uh, two-wheelers and they are ready to bring out at least one model each. Some of these uh, manufacturers are likely to display their production ready flex fuel two-wheelers at the upcoming Auto Expo and they will launch it uh, commercially post that as well. At the same time, they have requested policy enablers, one in the form of reduced GST. They have said that the GST on such flex fuel vehicles must be brought down from 28% to 18% because they are environmentally friendly and uh, we need to ensure larger adoption of such uh, vehicles. At the same time, they have, uh, they have asked for a lower cost of fuel, uh, ethanol blended fuel for such two wheelers because flex fuel vehicles are known to have lower efficiency than full uh, petrol or ice two wheelers and therefore a lower cost of fuel would be required. Thirdly, they have requested a long-term roadmap for uh, ethanol blended fuel to be available all across the country. So these are the three uh, policy enablers that the industry had sought. But at the same time, they have told the minister that they are ready to produce uh, ethanol powered two wheelers in the country. Okay, thank you. That's an important story that Parikshit brings us. But Nimesh is now standing by for our segment D Street Chatter. Nimesh, what have you picked up? Hi, Rimana. It's a large cap day, so to speak, and largely led by uh, large cap IT names as well as select uh, pharma names as well. So IT is rallying on the back of hopes of red cut in the US, and that could be the near term tailwind for the IT sector to do well. And that's one sector which is relatively under owned as well within the institution. So that's that's one one space which is well bid by larger FIS today. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, but you know, it's a broader market which is turning a bit negative now. The advanced decline ratio is one is to one, and there is a bit of profit booking as well in the broader market stock. So, uh, from here on, the feedback is at at all time high levels. The 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 next leg of rally can be largely led by uh, by the large cap names. So, there could be a big shift from um, a bit of profit booking in the broader market stocks and money moving towards the large cap names. IT was a clear example today. Uh, we have the Reliance AGM tomorrow. That can that can set the tone for Reliance as well. And of course, uh, in the MSCI rebalancing, a big flow will come into HDFC Bank as well. So there are some large cap levers which can take the Nifty higher. So that's overall feedback. But uh, today's rally is largely led by IT and select pharma names. Always uh, interested also, Nimesh, to know about what you've picked up on individual stocks that brokerages are talking about. Well, you know, uh, so in terms of individual names, the first second on my list is GSPL. Uh, in the last few days, if you look at the last three, four days chart, it's been a big move on that name on, on, on large volumes as well. Uh, uh, and again, the feedback from the street is that maybe uh, the street is anticipating a corporate development very soon. Uh, potentially, there could be an announcement where they can look to, uh, you know, collapse the holding company structure. Just to give an example uh, for this, Rima, uh, GSPL owns close to 54% in Gujarat gas. Now, that stake itself uh, is valued around 200 to 210 rupees per share 
on a 50 to 60 percent holding company discount, according to the various brokerage notes. So that seems to be the big trigger on why there is a bit of excitement in GSPL in the last many days. So that's the first name. The second name is Allied uh, Blenders, a recent listing. Uh, has seen some bit of uh, interest back in that particular name. Essentially, in the last couple of days, I understand a leading uh, uh, long only uh, FIF fund is an active buyer, and that's why you've seen large volumes as well as a bit of outperformance in the stock as well. The third stock is uh, uh, LKB Finance. Again, a small stock, uh, current market price around 215. Uh, but in, if you look at the one month chart, even that stock has seen a big rally in that name as well, and the city is anticipating a corporate development in LKB Finance as well. I've heard potentially there could be an open offer in this particular in, in this particular company by by a foreign player. So something on those lines to watch out in uh, LKB Finance. The the fourth name is uh, Met Plus uh, Healthcare. We saw a large block uh, two days back uh, uh, in, in in Met Plus Healthcare where Wabu Pinkers sold out its entire 11.3% stake. It was a clean out trade. Now I understand there could be another large potential sale, uh, likely a, likely a clean out from another large potential investor uh, in in Met Plus. So that's something to track. Uh, in Met Plus Healthcare. And the last is Prestige Estate. Uh, well, the stock has been uh, in, in a narrow range in the last one month. Uh, but again, uh, the sense is that maybe the company is likely to raise funds by QIP, which can get open uh, later this week. So that's the trigger on uh, Prestige Estates. Thank you very much uh, for that. You know, earlier today, we also chatted with another real estate company called Rustamji, Keystone Realtor. And I was surprised to know the extent to which their realization per square feet realization has gone up. In Q1, it stands at more than 25,000 uh, rupees per square feet. And in the same time, last year, it was at 17,500. So a 40% jump in their realization. It's partly to do with price hikes, partly to do with the mix, the focus on luxury, but a 40% jump seen in the realization in Q1 on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, that's for Keystone Realtor. For Prestige, is Nimesh picked up. There appears to be some fundraising on the annual that we should uh, keep our eye out on. Mitesh is now with us for a few BTST calls. Mitesh? Yeah. So I think, you know, uh, I would uh, go with the buy uh, on, or a BTST on, rather a buy because it's a cash market stock on uh, Oil India with a stop at about 714 for targets of uh, 750 and uh, a BTST, uh, a level STVT on Concord uh, with a stop at about uh, 980 for targets of 956. Thank you very much uh, for that. Oil India has seen a bit of a spike right now. MCX is also on our radar uh, on the back of positive brokerage commentary. Vamakshi joins in for more. Vamakshi. Well, absolutely. MCX is surging higher in the trading session today. In fact, uh, HDFC Institutional Equities has uh, given a buy rating on this counter and increased its target price to 6,000 per share. They recently caught up with the management and uh, they have they say that the company has an exciting product pipeline ahead. Uh, they're launching new products such as monthly series as well as index options. In fact, technical testing for the weekly option product is currently under process. The company is continuously enhancing its tech stack uh, and also focusing on in increasing institutional institutional participation as well as hedging activity on the platform. They also say that appointment of the new MD and CEO Mrs. Praveena Rai will significantly boost these strategic initiatives. Uh, additionally, they mentioned that the company is very well positioned to withstand ongoing regulatory challenges like the curb on index option volumes, the reversal of uh, interest earned on clearing funds to clearing members. Over here, they believe that the impact is uh, not quantified but they expect the impact to be very minimal. And thirdly, the true to label charges uh, they believe will be neutral for exchanges as they will switch to blended fees. Overall, they've got a quite positive outlook on the stock. They're expecting notional and premium volume to register a 61% and 43% CAGR from FY24 to 27. They've maintained their revenue and EPS estimates, but they've gone ahead and increased the multiple to 40 times given better visibility. So given all of those factors, MCX uh, surging higher in the trading session today. Okay, all right, Vamakshi, got it. Thank you very much uh, for putting that in context. Well, uh, let's uh, go forward and uh, welcome in our next guest on the show, Mayuresh Joshi, Head of Equity Research at William O'Neill is with us. Mayuresh, good to have you on. Actually, let me start with the exchanges, right? Because they're making all kinds of headlines. Uh, people are getting excited about a potential NSC listing. In fact, I was looking at uh, BSC, it's still up in trade. IEX is up in trade. And Vamakshi is just telling us about uh, MCX. Uh, do you like any of the listed exchanges? Also be. So I think uh, anybody holding on to uh, BSC or MCX uh, should continue holding on. Uh, and obviously, I think the trigger points that Vamakshi just mentioned, uh, that is expected to provide tailwinds uh, for all these exchange platforms. Uh, so new contracts expected to get launched uh, 
there is expectations in terms of uh, uh, revival of uh, volumes taking place, specifically in the future segments, uh, as far as MCX is concerned. The new product pipeline uh, definitely is going to be something to be watched out for. Uh, uh, the only concern that probably lies through uh, is the, the pass-through of interest on uh, the clearing funds. Uh, so I think once you get some sort of clarity on that front, uh, there will be some portion of the interest cost uh, uh, that might be incremental if this probably happens, but might get saved uh, if it's in favor of the company as well. Apart from that, I think uh, the expectations of uh, all these exchange companies doing well, and yes, the potential listing, of NSC adds as an added trigger. So yeah, anybody holding on to BSEMC should continue. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, just stay on with us, Mayoresh. We'll have more questions in a bit. Uh, we do have to take a quick break. But as we take that break, let's uh, leave you with some opinion that we picked up from Rhythm Desai, Chief Equity Strategist India at Morgan Stanley. Rhythm shared his outlook on the Indian market with the CNBC. He also spoke about uh, the possibility of uh, perhaps a, a correction in the near future. Take a look. Bull market peaks are made of excesses. You need excesses in credit. You need excesses in corporate activity. You need an excess in earnings, valuations, and sentiment. So there are parts of the markets that look a little frothy, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, there are some smids that look small cap, mid cap stocks that look a little extended. But we are nowhere close to the peak on issuances. We have not seen any credit uh, recovery of, uh, of note. Uh, we're yet to see a major peak in earnings. So there are many parts of the market that are not there as yet. I suspect they will all get there in time. Uh, and we will, of course, hit a peak. But um, my best guess is we are not there as yet. But the things to note uh, are, I think, with respect to the credit cycle. It's a very benign and modest credit cycle. And credit to GDP uh, in the private sector is still below previous peaks. And it's hard to fathom that we get into a bull market peak without actually getting a major credit cycle. So the thing to watch out is to see how credit pans out. I think we're still far away from a new peak. We will get to a new peak, uh, especially on corporate balance sheets, which remain quite light. Uh, so with light balance sheets, with earnings mid-cycle, uh, it doesn't feel like a bull market peak, even though valuations may be a little rich uh, compared to uh, where investors want them to be. I think we should be prepared for a correction. Uh, that's how bull markets are. They will correct when they are least expected to correct. Um, we've had a very smooth run uh, with a little bit of a wobble here and there. Uh, retail flows tend to be quite ferocious, and I expect that to continue for quite some time. But what will change, I think, as you head into the end of the year, is that the corporate issuances will start picking up. So this market will see a, a, a significant rise in issuances, and it will offset some of the demand that is coming through from retail. The key imponderable is whether foreign investors come and buy. I think they will. But uh, because there will be greater supply, I think the market will be a little bit more balanced than it has been over the past few months.
Welcome back. Well, take a look at Gillette. You know, we're due for the numbers out there. The stock has seen, been seeing a good amount of delivery-based buying. Gillette has now spiked up in the last few minutes, so just keep an eye on that one. Volumes as well are perking up as we speak. Mayuri Joshi is with us. Hi, Mayuresh. Good afternoon. Good to see you in GSPL. Do you track that one? Nimesh was just telling us on D-Street Chatter that there could be possibly some value unlocking. It has stakes in various companies, has a core business as well. At around 400 rupees, do you have a view? Dr. Nigel, no, I think that has always been a trigger for the stock, uh, the holdings that it probably has. And the holdings are quite substantial compared to the current market cap. Uh, so any kind of divestment around the holdings, the core holdings that it probably has, is going to have a significant amount of impact as far as balance sheet dynamics are concerned. But as far as the core business uh, is concerned, uh, you should see a gradual recovery coming through in terms of earnings. Uh, and therefore, our own expectation is uh, second half should probably lay a base case uh, for earnings to start recovering. And some substantial element coming in the next uh, financial year as well. Uh, again, I think from a balance sheet dynamics, uh, pretty healthy at this juncture. And therefore, again, anybody holding the stock should continue. Okay, got that. Uh, let's see what else is uh, hitting the headlines when as we're uh, coming to the final minutes of trade. Uh, discussed, of course, uh, Trent, that stock's still up and about. Uh, some of the home financiers, the smaller ones like Repco Home Finance, finding some takers today. Uh, stocks also. Uh, up and about. Uh, just, a, just a word on some of the NBFCs. We were speaking with Sriram Finance in the morning as well, Mayuresh, uh, and they sounded extremely bullish on growth. Uh, even the gold financiers continue to you know, sound very, very optimistic. Uh, would you look at either a Sriram or a Chola or any of the larger NBFCs uh, at this point in time? So you said it, Suri. I think both the names that you mentioned, Sriram and Chola, are probably the leadership stocks that we are looking at within the NBFC space. Uh, and again, I think they have a very spread out um, advances uh, mix. Uh, so when you're talking about two-wheeler finance, commercial finance, uh, rural financing, tractor financing, SME financing, uh, they are probably present in most segments out here. Now, a large part of the expectations with better monsoons, expectations of um, even the RBI starting a rate cut cycle in India will boost the prospects for rural India. And as that happens, uh, the kind of growth that can come through in terms of advances can be quite substantial. The second element is obviously the capital adequacy that both these stocks have, uh, both in terms of their growth ratios and tier one ratios in particular, uh, are extremely strong to fuel the kind of advances growth that we probably need. Uh, because of a better credit rating and the mix of borrowings that it probably has uh, at this juncture, uh, the expectation largely that is getting laid out uh, is that names and spreads, uh, which are very, very stable at this juncture, uh, should also show some amount of expansion over the next couple of years. And last but not least, in terms of uh, the unsecured advances uh, as a part of the overall balance sheet uh, are not uh, significant enough compared to the other smaller peers. Uh, so yeah, I think the valuation matrix might take them yeah, in the top quartile, uh, but I think the earnings growth should also be equally strong for both these companies. So yeah, we remain, uh, we maintain our optimistic view on Sri Ram and Joy, both these companies. Okay, all right. Uh, Mayuresh, I wanted to ask you on Vodafone idea. You know, there are bursts of some good news that keep coming in out there. The hope is that, you know, those dues that are there, they'll be cut down a little bit. In the near term, they've got some breathing money as well, you know, because for the next year or so, it'll suffice. And then hopefully the, uh, you know, the uh, tariffs start moving up. And... Uh, you know, that's what could support the core business as well. What's the view? You know, post that uh, issue that they did, the stock ran away to 18 rupees, but it's cooled off since then. Your take? No, so I think the developments that are happening, Nigel, are all in the positive direction for Vodafone Idea. Uh, obviously, I think the uh, waiver news that we are also hearing about in terms of not uh, expected to maintain is currently not, not confirmed. But again, I think if something comes on that front, it is a welcome positive with increased tariffs. Uh, Obviously, the leverage portion, which is significantly higher on Vodafone's balance sheet, uh, uh, should start coming off. And therefore, the stress related to interest payments should come off as well. Uh, but a large part of uh, the earnings recovery will happen gradually and it will happen over a period of time. Uh, so you'll get these periodic bouts in terms of price moves that Vodafone idea will have. Uh, but the substantial re-rating will take some time as balance sheet repair itself is going to take some time. So I think we still maintain our optimistic view on Airtel. We maintain our optimistic view on Indus Stars. And we obviously maintain our optimistic view on Geo to relax. Uh, 
I think they will continue doing well in terms of all the tariff rise that has probably taken place. Uh, and also other parts of the deleveraging exercise, as an example, that Bharti might do as far as their African operations are concerned, geo expectations in terms of demerger of uh, their telecom arm as well. Uh, so I think a little bit more uh, skewed towards uh, Airtel and Geo at this juncture. Mm. Um, Mayuresh, uh, finally, the Reliance AGM tomorrow. That's one of the, the big, big watch points, right? Uh, what would you expect? I mean, any, anything on the on the horizon? And uh, also, 3,000, is, is the stock still a good buy? And what kind of price targets would you have? No, so we remain extremely positive. I think the EPS, RS ratings, the institution holding, as we see most parameters on cancel and get full, fulfilled by Reliance. Uh, obviously, I think the core business in terms of their upstream operations uh, are expected to be steady state. Uh, the expectations of a pet chem recovery will start coming through over the next few quarters uh, as uh, China and the globe starts recovering. Uh, retail operations, telecom as well as Reliance retail, uh, should have a steady show. And therefore, I think the kind of capex that they're doing in the new energy businesses uh, in a very calibrated fashion, uh, uh, without putting too much of stress onto the balance sheet as far as leverage is concerned, uh, uh, is a welcome move. I think some announcements on that front in terms of uh, developments and uh, uh, any key uh, uh, developments in terms of when will this come on stream is going to be extremely welcome. Uh, uh, so we remain uh, very, very positive in terms of reliance. Uh, we, continue holding this stock in our global portfolios. Uh, our take is that this stock will continue posting a double digit uh, earnings growth over the next uh, few years. Uh, and therefore, ROE should show significant improvement. Uh, so not ruling out uh, 18 to 20% upside over the next couple of years. Okay, that's, uh, by the way, news coming in on Vodafone Idea, where Vodafone Idea's curative petition in the AGR matter is you know scheduled to be heard on the 30th of August. That's a Friday. Uh, this is a big trigger for the stock. The overall AGR dues are about 70,000 crore rupees. The companies, Bharti Airtel and Vodafone Idea, have argued that there are certain mathematical calculations. The Supreme Court had struck that down. And this was the final resort, a curative petition filed by Vodafone Idea that, you know, take a look at that, you know, calculation of AGR dues. If they get a favorable verdict, then the overall dues of 70,000 crore rupees can come down by nearly half. We're talking about a near 35,000 crore rupee relief, and that will bring down the annual payments that Vodafone Idea has to make on their AGR dues, you know, after the moratorium comes to an end. So this is seen as one of the big triggers. But historically, um, you know, curative petitions have not always been successful. They're not you know, they're often not heard. If they're heard, they're not always successful. But considering that the government is a large shareholder, the largest shareholder in Vodafone Idea, and analysts say that if the government is keen on rescuing Vodafone Idea, then this is the best shot. Because beyond, if this uh, AGR dues are not, uh, you know, they don't come down, then it's going to be difficult for Vodafone Idea to meet those payments. You know, City had said that in a bull case scenario, if these AGR dues indeed come down, uh, then the target price for them is 28 rupees. So not all the brokerages have factored in it. It's a bull case if this mm. happens. It's not the base case scenario mm. that they successfully uh, get out. But we're talking halving, potentially. Potentially halving. halving. You know, and the company has come out and said that in the conference call, that mm -hmm. if it's successful, we're talking about 70,000 crore of AGR dues coming down to about 35,000. Okay, let's see uh, how that plays out. But I guess, I guess uh, because of the reasons that you mentioned, this is a curative petition and... We don't know its fate in the court. We'll just have to wait and watch and see how it goes. 30th of August is, of course, the uh, date of hearing. Well, with that, the bell is also gone. So let's quickly wind down. Uh, what has been, uh, well, an okay day for the market because we did hit the uh, fresh all-time high for what it's worth. And then some profit-taking set in, but we're still closing with a gain of about 27 points on the Nifty. And it was IT all the way. Talk about the top winners. LTI Mindtree, Wipro, Infosys. Tech Mahindra, TCS, all of the IT big boys are lined up on top. And then Pharma was the other sector that stood out with some buying on Divis, on Sun Pharma uh, and names like Sipla as well. Bharti Airtel uh, also having a pretty decent session with a gain of about 2%. What didn't quite work was uh, the banking part of the market. Bank Nifty is underperformed big time, half a percent lower on the Bank Nifty axis, Kotak, most of your names on the downside. Aside of that, uh, Maruti, Suzuki, Asian Paints, Adani. Uh, these are some of the, the weak links on the Nifty. These are the three biggest losers of the day. Uh, but uh, perhaps not too bad, Nigel. 
still managing uh, that fresh all-time high and a 25-point move, at least on the large cap. Well, we got there, but we couldn't hold on to that mark. For the time being, though, we'll wrap up on this edition of Closing Bell. You don't go anywhere. On the other side, we'll focus on markets forward.